Good morning. Welcome to Emmett Grove Baptist uh, Sunday School Hour, and we are uh, in this uh, series of the I Am's of Jesus and the, and the, the great gospel of John, the spiritual uh, gospel of the four. And uh, it is a lot of words and read, and, and it has been a smorgasbord uh, to, the, to the believer and, uh, and to those that are seeking um, uh, God, uh, uh, one of the books that, that one would recommend to someone that is coming to salvation and, and God is speaking is to read uh, this particular gospel. So it has been a, a blessing to teach through it. And uh, we are um, in the midst of the, the sixth of seven I am's that Jesus spoke in, in the gospel of John. And today it's uh, my favorite. It's uh, my favorite verse in the Bible, John 14, 6. And um, and we uh, we be, we began it last week, and uh, we're going to con uh, conclude that uh, uh, two part study on I am the way, the truth, and the life, and adding emphatically and in and in uh, exclusivity that no one comes to the Father except through me, and that me would be Jesus. So. Um, we'll, we'll look at these things this morning in just a few minutes, but as in all things, we'll go to the Lord in prayer and ask for his blessing that he would speak and not I, and, uh, and, and those that hear would understand it in a very special way. Uh, God, we thank you today, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Jesus, uh, God, for your resurrection, God, for your, your sacrifice in dying, then your resurrection, and, uh, and God, your return, uh, to heaven for without these things we we have no new testament we uh we don't have any hope god and uh but you have given it through your son uh, uh eternal life uh in hope uh, if, in living here god in, in a place that's really not our home and um and these things you speak of lord and uh in the great i am uh, the way the truth and the life are are certainly our days here on planet earth but god this is eternally this is the destiny, God, of every uh, of every believer, uh, God, and the, the destiny. I promise, Lord, at the judgment that everyone would wish, in a sense, that they had made the right choice. God, I pray that this word would would, would mean something in, in considering these decisions we make in life, how we walk in the Lord, and those that don't know you, uh, God. A decision has to be made, and uh, and and we just ask your blessings and. God, speak to me as unworthy as I am. Uh, I speak to the Holy Spirit now that uh, even Jesus, as you said, that, that he, the Holy Spirit, um, testifies about you. And I pray now that he would have control of my mind and my voice, God, to, to testify about you and to the truth of this great I am. Uh, I give you thanks and I give you praise. Lord, give us, uh, give us your grace and mercy in this study. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, that was a good prayer. Uh, we could just say amen and go home. Um, so the, the I am, the I am, the way, the truth, and the life. Let's go back just a minute and kind of kind of clip on to where we were last week because we started out in John uh, chapter 13, verse 33, where Jesus was. And remember, he is, let's go back just a second beyond this. He, he is in the upper room. He is, he really is speaking the, his last personal words to his 11 disciples. Judas had gone out to betray him, and uh, the 11 were left. He washed their feet, and among some other things that were done that night in that upper room, they had observed pa uh, Passover, <clears throat> and Jesus took the first, his last Passover and turned it into what we know as the Lord's Supper or communion, and, um, and, and the new covenant was, 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 was ushered in uh, as he spoke these words. Um, and very, I mean, just a, whew, I mean, it, it was a, huge pivotal night for mankind uh, that night and certainly over the next three days of his crucifixion. But he's literally, Jesus is now somewhere about nine to 12 hours. Uh, the next morning, this is in the evening, and we know that the Passover began when the sun set. They've already eaten and he's teaching uh, um, and uh, they're going to leave the upper room and go out. But but by nine o'clock in the morning, the next morning, he's going to be on the cross, nailed to the cross. So this is how close he is. And so <clears throat> he's comforting them and he's preparing them for what was about to happen. <clears throat> mentioned last week about they had no idea uh, what was coming. Um, the grief, the shock, uh, the trauma of, of, of their uh, best friend and, 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 and savior uh, to be hung on a cross. And, 
So he starts out in 33 here, in, in 13, in, in midst of speaking to them and comforting them. Really, 14, chapter 14 is the comfort chapter. He says, little children, <clears throat> I am with you a, a little while longer. And it was a just, and he meant, what did he mean there? That just that night? No, remember, he's going to appear to them um, over 40 days after the resurrection. So he's really just kind of covering here. Um, that time period. He's going to be with them. They're going to be able to see him from time to time on planet Earth, okay? I'm going to be with you a little while longer, and you will seek me, as I said to the Jews, uh, now also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. Where I am going, you cannot come. Now, this was a baffling question to them, even though they had been told several times. Um, and, and so then, in 34, Simon speaks up and says, he said, Lord, where are you going? I'm going to go. He says, I'm going to, I'm going to be with you a little while longer, and I'm going, and you cannot come. And, and so Peter asked the question, but where are you going? And, and again, Jesus said, where I'm going, you cannot follow me, but you will later. Um, and we talked about that last week. Later on, remember why he said they couldn't come now? They had a ministry, right? I mean, we look forward. We, we, can, we, we know what happened, but... They were the apostles who were going to go out and, and write the New Testament and, and, uh, and, and be instrumental in starting the church and the Holy Spirit would come, all those good things that we learned in Acts. So their ministry was just beginning. His was ending as far as, as making uh, uh, atonement for our sins um, and forgiveness and all this grace and mercy that we were given, all of that, uh, this, this dispensation of grace um, up to this point, and and, and it, we're still there. We're still there. This is grace. It's about people having the having the uh, uh, the privilege and and the, and the, uh, to to accept Jesus as their Savior and live forever. Uh, and that's really where all of this is going. Um, and, and so they couldn't come now, but Jesus said they're going to follow later. And then Peter asked this question: Why can't I follow you right now? You know, Peter was the outspoken one in thirty seven. He said, "Lord, why can't I follow you right now? Why can't I go right now?" Um, kind of just talked about that, but there was there was a there was a purpose, um, and so uh, uh, it opened up this question of of going where Jesus was going, uh, the place that he was going, where that place is, which kind of draws the question of how to get there, the way, and that's exactly what. So last week we we looked at uh, this, you know, Jesus he's he knows what you're thinking. He knew what they were thinking. He sets this in this comfort and sets this thing up to tell them that. He knows their minds. And, and these questions are drawn uh, uh, out uh, from, from, the, from these, uh, these uh, apostles, these disciples. Um, and so Jesus goes on to, to, to describe a place. Uh, 14, when he opens up in comfort, uh, basically he says, don't be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled and and uh, believe in God and that that is you believe in God. It's kind of a if you look at it in in, in the, my concordance here that, that the, the verbiage of that is uh, if you believe in God or saying you believe in God. So if you believe in God, you believe in me. That's what Jesus is saying. Believe in me also. Believe what I'm telling you. Believe what I'm saying here. And he goes on to describe heaven. He goes on to describe the place that that, that God, uh, Father God, has a a very huge uh, mansion. It is a literal place, the place where, where, where the Father is. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second, uh, where he, his abode, where, where he dwells. Um, it's a big place, huge. Um, um, you know, we did some math on this. Uh, we mentioned this last week that in, in Revelation, the new heaven uh, is 1,500 miles wide and long or, or uh, 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 length and width and then it's 1500 miles high it's a cube and so if you do the math on 1500 times 1500 times 1500 um, you come up this is incredible with a number something like this if every believer had a cubic mile a cubic mile. I mean, you had a 5,260-foot cube to live in in heaven. That's, that's humongous. That's 640 acres of floor space, wall space, ceiling space. 
640 acres. This is just we're just fantasizing here. I know that uh, of of the immense size of heaven, and and it's and it may be exactly what we say here. So when I say fantasize, take that very lightly. Uh, but anyway, it comes up to three billion three hundred and seventy five million cubic miles in that in that new heaven. That is, you know, if, so if there what we're saying is if there was if there's three billion. 375 million people that'll be saved will all have a cubic mile. As our last week we talked about rooms, there are merely dwelling places, and we said that's an, a word there really means apartment, a place to, to live. Uh, we won't really own it. Uh, and as a matter of fact, part of what we talked about is that Jesus himself is going to be our landlord. He's going to be the one that let, allows us in. This is exactly what this I am is. Um, that he's going to give those we talked we talked about eternal leases that is salvation that we have the right to live with him forever um, and that where he is he's going to come get us he says if I go to prepare a place I will come again and receive you in verse 3 and that where I am this is so key right here this is so key this whole thing hinges on like number verse 3 here before he begins this this great I am <clears throat> that where I am there you may be up, be also. In other words, where I'm going, what he's telling him, where I'm going, that's what you're, you, you're going to be there later, but you're coming. You'll be there later. And that Jesus himself is going to come get us. We talked about transportation, how we're going to get there. He's taking care of all that, all accommodation. You talked about the word preparing. What did he mean? He, I'm going to prepare. What, did he go back to, to finish up building heaven? No, I don't think that means what that means. I think that means that he is the one that holds it, the book. Of, of those residents, the Lamb's Book of Life, and, and your name is in it. And, and I believe, uh, and Scripture supports this, and, and uh, that uh, when you're born, uh, everybody's name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, God knows who's going to stay there and who's not, because the Bible speaks a lot about blotting out. I will not blot out your name. Blot is all in the Scriptures everywhere. So if a child is born and before his, his uh, uh, age of accountability, we believe this, from scripture, not not many. There's not many scriptures about it, but um, David was one of them that we we, we kind of uh, hang our hat on on that, that spiritual nail there. That uh, that little children are not accountable. That don't know, and they'll go they'll they'll go straight to heaven. Unborn babies. Uh, uh, you know, I got a I got a I got a sibling. My mom had a miscarriage, and I got a sibling that's in heaven. I, when I get there after a billion years of looking at Jesus, I I, I might find my sibling there. I don't even know, but I know that's that's a fact. So you're in the Lamb's book, I believe. Uh, if I'm wrong, God will show me. I, I've, I've thought about this a lot in the past. Um, but at the point in time when we, we don't choose Jesus, then there's a time when God will give up. We've been studying that in Romans. Uh, when, when God lets go and said, you want to do it your way, you know, um, and he lets go, you know, abandonment. That's the, the worst judgment ever. When he uh, Then your name is blotted out. So he's the landlord. He holds the book uh, uh, of those that will be in heaven. All those things we talked about last week. Um, and we made a statement a few weeks ago that came back to me. And uh, I think this is Matthew Henry. Uh, I should do a better job, I think, of writing who I quote. doesn't matter in this sense because it makes the same point. Many like to talk about heaven. Many like to imagine heaven. Many like to compare things to heaven, dream about heaven. But very few people are concerned about how to get there. And this is exactly what Jesus is telling us. He is emphatically telling us in John 14, 6, this is how you get there. You want to go to heaven? You want to talk about it? The wonderful things that are in verses 2 and 3 and over in Revelation? You want to get there? Here it is. And it's just, it's just to the point, okay? So, after this, there's, I want to read 4 through 7, verses 4 through 7 in chapter 14 of John. Jesus just said that where I am in this place that we just mentioned, this enormous place, this 3 billion and 375 million cubic miles of, 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 of residency with God, uh, he says this, and you know the way. The question was, where are you going? Uh, and... Uh, the place was, was but, but the way, how do you get there? Uh, and you know where I'm going, or you, excuse me, you know the way where I'm going. It's two things there, how to get there and, and the place where it's at. And then this opens up another question. Thomas said to him, yes, this is the Thomas that doubted. Thomas said to him, um, Lord, we do not know where you are going. 
basically. So how do we know the way? If, if we don't know where you're going, how do we know the way? Jesus said to him, and here it is. He laid it out right here. I am the way. Me. It is I that is the way. And I'm the truth and the life. And then he adds this, a lot of people, you know, we, we, we kind of will use to say this I am and we will leave off this part. But this is more as important as anything because apart from this, no, none of the above even matters. No one doesn't say some, it said, he says, no one comes to the Father but through me. And he goes on to say in verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him. And have seen him. This is not the first time he said this to the disciples. This opens up in verses 8. Philip's question, Lord, just show us the Father and we'll, that'll be all we need to know. And, and he went on. I tell you, this is just a wonderful, wonderful chapter right here. I, I tell you, when you get to 14, 14, I've said this over and over and over, 14, 15, 16, and 17, I, it just hardly gets any better. The last words of Jesus to his disciples, you're always going to tell the people you love, if you were going out of this world, your children, those that were most important, you would give them the greatest wisdom and the greatest uh, uh, speaking that you would do if it was your last. So this is just like I say, it's just so in, so important in the in the in, in the time frame of this. Uh, so Jesus said, "We go here. You know the way." And uh, uh, in fourteen and five, so Jesus, we just mentioned, he sets this up. Uh, he always does. He knows what they're thinking. Um, and so he tells them they know the way uh, uh, and, and how to get to where he is going. But remember this, let's look at this also is a, is, a, is a great teaching for us, that this question and answer is a, is a picture uh, um, of, of prayer, of, of, of the, the, the apostles asking questions, the disciples, we'll call them disciples now, they're going to be known as apostles a little later on, um, because they didn't become an apostle until he was resurrected, right? Apostle means they saw Jesus in his glorified body. So right now they're not apostles, but they will be pretty soon. Um, and so it's a, it's a picture uh, uh, or a type of prayer. The disciples are, are, are asking questions and Jesus is giving answers. And so I, this just kind of stood out to me here as I began to read this. Uh, in fact, if you look a little bit further into 14 right here, chapter 14, you'll see down to 13, Jesus uh, after he uh, kind of rebukes Philip for his question, he says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. And that's exactly what they were doing. They were asking so that the Father may be glorified. And in 14, he says, again, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Um, so asking Jesus. Now, you know the way, he said. You know the way uh, where I am going. You know how to get there. You know, and and uh, uh, it's, and so he kind of throws it um kind of throws it back in, into their court there and their thinking. So this Thomas, this doubting Thomas, remember he was the one that was not there uh, the, the first day that Jesus appeared in his resurrected body, came through the wall, walked through the wall where they were locked behind a, a closed door, scared to death, you know, scared they were going to be crucified probably. Uh, they were coming after them to be thrown in jail or what have you. Just uh, And then, the, you know, then the, the fear, of not the fear, but the, um, the heartbreak of losing Jesus and... Uh, um, and all of those things that came together, here's Doubting Thomas, and he's asking here. Now, his question was, and it sounds like he wasn't even listening, uh, Lord, we do not know where you're going. Jesus said, where I go, and he's talking about that, and uh, in, in a sense, and uh, you know, and it looks, sounds like he just didn't know what he was, uh, that he just missed everything right here. Um, and and, and I, I know he understood that it was a place uh uh, Jesus didn't call it heaven, but he was talking about his father being there, and he was going back. Um, they most likely knew that where he came from. He came from heaven. He was God, um, and they knew that um, those things. So, what it was? What, what, why, why was his question here? Uh, you know, uh, was it uh, um, so much uh, asking where heaven is? You ever ask yourself that? Where is heaven? Like, like location wise, like we can believe something is there, but if we we don't know how to how to how to get to it. Uh, I just think about things that are that are out in the world that uh, we, that I like to see. Maybe I've seen a picture of it. Maybe maybe I'm going to go. But there there's always a way, uh, a travel or a route to get to that to lay your own eyes on it to see. Remember when I see Jesus, faith is gone. Right now I'm, I have faith that I'm going to see, but when I'm there and I see Him, there's going to be no more faith. I, I don't have to have faith. I have seen Him. 
Um, and, uh, and that's just interesting how faith, sight, and faith. And matter of fact, Thomas is going to play right into that, into that in that lesson. Blessed are those who believe and who do not see. Uh, and so, um, and that's, that's how God uh, wanted it. It's all about faith. It really is all about faith. Everything is tied to faith. But Thomas is doubting. So what is, it, what is he asking? Why would he say that? Why would he say, I don't, Lord, if we don't know where you're going, how, how, we, how are we going to know to get there? Well, I, I think they were thinking more of, of earthly right here. I don't think they were thinking of, of the eternal, even though he spoke of heaven, but he was going away. And I and I just pondered was it you know was it uh, Bethlehem was it was it someplace in the Holy Land where he was at was going to because they still had on their minds that he was going to be an earthly king he was going to come in and conquer Rome and, uh, and and everything was going you know they were looking like this is going to be the millennial reign now and that's 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 we know that's in the in the future but he's going to take over and be a be an earthly king so I I believe he was maybe thinking of an earthly place. You know, if going to them was, was walking and, and going to a place. That's all they did. They just, they didn't, nobody didn't have cars, but, you know, Jesus would go, you know, wherever he went. That's what a disciple means. They would just follow him. So they they, not, they were wearing out some sandals going all over the place, you know, in, in three years of ministry. And so another another place to go, where are you going, Lord? We, we, we want to know if you're, if you're, if we can't go with you and you're just going there, where? how do we know how to get to where you're at? Boy, that's key right there. Uh, where, how do I know to get to where you're at? And, and so I, Thomas's question is sincere. It's a very good question, actually. You know, doubting can go, go two ways. If I doubt God, I'm, I'm probably in trouble. But if I doubt, like, the way of God, let me give you two examples in the Bible that I just see as I was praying this morning, God just kind of gave me. Uh, it, when, when Christ came, Whenever uh, um, God was setting everything up, and He sent John the Baptist ahead, that His John the Baptist's daddy Zacharias was a, was a priest, and uh, anyway, you know, he got he he drew they drew Lot uh, Lot or, or his name was drawn uh, uh, by Lot, and he uh, got to go into the temple, you know, and, and service uh, the, the things there in the temple, very very uh, prestigious thing to have a blessing. God spoke to him and said, you're going to have a son, and he's, you know, and he's going to come and, and announce my son. Uh, and uh, Zacharias said, man, I'm old and my wife's old. How can we have a, a child? And God caused him to be mute the entire time that his, uh, that his, uh, his wife, Elizabeth, was pregnant. He couldn't speak. I mean, he, he, re he punished him. And you say, well, he was just asking a question. Well, God knows the heart. Well, listen at Mary. When, when Gabriel came to Mary and said, you, you know, you're going to be with child, and you talking about perplexing. Uh, you just think that Zacharias was an old man and couldn't have a child. Same thing that happened with Abraham and Siri, uh, Abram and Siri, um, basically with Zachariah and Elizabeth. Um, but, but Mary asked the same, kind of, you think about the same question. She said about, him, about her becoming pregnant uh, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and she said, how can this be? And, and when you look at it, you say, well, wasn't she doubting? Well, God knew the heart. She really wasn't. She just wanted to know how these things were going to happen. And she was not. So what's the, what's the difference? It's the heart, you know. And I think Thomas had a good heart here. So what I'm saying is sometimes doubting is not really doubting God, but, Lord, I need your help. I, I'm, I'm a little bit, my, my faith is, is, is a little wobbly. You gotta help me, help my unbelief here. So I think he's asking a very good question. He just wants to know. He wanted assurance. I don't want to miss you. This is good things here. I don't want to miss you, and I want to be where you're at. Jesus said, where I'm at, you'll be there. And he wanted to make sure he didn't miss anything, that wherever that place was, uh, and have no doubts about it. And really, this is, could be looked at, uh, in, in essence, uh, as, as a salvation question. It really is. Uh, I know who you are, Lord. I, I, I love you, and I want to be with you, and I don't want to miss the way. I don't. And that's what Jesus is doing. I'm going to... So he's going to comfort them now uh, and telling them the way. And this one verse, I'm telling you, it is... Uh, you know, well, let's go back just a minute to the to the the passage on the shepherd shepherd where, where uh, the uh, uh, the uh, I think it is the fourth I am uh, numbered where Jesus said I am the door to the sheep I'm the gate to the sheep um, that entryway uh, uh, we, we said that a, that a, a door or a, or a entry is a is a uh, is is used to to uh, give access open. To give access, and it's also closed to, to prohibit uh, entry. It really just it either allows entry or prohibits entry. 
And Jesus said, that's me. I, I, I'm the one that, that allows you to, 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 to enter into my family when you're saved and also into heaven. Um, and it's really, and, it's, and, and they're both, this, both these I am's are, are but, but the, the John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he could have just said, matter of fact, if you look at, uh, I looked at the message, we might have read, we read it last, last week in Sunday school. That the message translates the way, the door. He says, I am the door. Uh, uh, was it door or path? Uh, anyway, these two, these two I am's are close together, okay? They're very, they're very similar, very, very similar. But Jesus adds this, this, this phrase, I'm the, he says, I'm the way, the truth, life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, and it's, uh, it probably uh, is, in my heart anyway, the most exclusive, the most exclusive statement that there is only one way. Um, the disciples, the, uh, which when they wrote would be apostles later on, say this, there's only one one God and one mediator. And there's, you know, in the great Pentecostal sermon, there's only one name by which someone may be saved. And, uh, and it's all Jesus. It's just it's just one way. Um, we think about that door. We think about that sheep pen. Really is, is real similar to what Jesus is saying right here. Uh, the, uh, that sheepfold uh, and that sheep pen, sheepfold or the sheep that are within the pen, that pen is heaven. That's the only way. That's that entry into that. And he's and exactly what he's saying right here. Um, they just desperately, the disciples really wanted to be. I think they were all together here. I really think they were unified in their thoughts. I think that, I do believe that uh, those 11, whenever Peter asked a question, they were all saying, amen, amen, tell, tell us, you know. And when Thomas asked, they were saying, yes, I want to know. I want to, you know, sometimes we, Sometimes we don't say anything, but we're glad somebody else asked the question, you know, because uh, that's really what you wanted to ask, and you did. That's one good thing about being with the brothers and sisters, and and because uh, I've I've been in Bible studies, and somebody asks a question, I go, man, that is a good question, you know, and uh, and and, and uh, even uh, it's just amazing why why that's why God says don't forsake the assembling of one another. We, we're to be together and learn together, and uh, and God can teach us. And think about these testimonies and what He's doing there. That's wonderful. It really is. I, I like for this thing to go on for a while. Uh, the testimonies. Um, yeah, I tell you, it's, it's very inspiring to see what God does in people's lives. Turns them around, changes them. Um, and, and so they wanted to be with him. They were desperate. Uh, and, it, and, and it's that way today. It really is. Uh, and I wrote this down. That where Jesus is, is where you want to be. And he, he promises that. He gives that promise right there. Where I am, there you may be also. And that's really the goal of this pursuing Jesus. But there's only one way. Um, and he makes that so plain, as we just said, uh, in his presence. And I think about, man, I think about 1 John 3, 2. And by the way, if Pastor Tim ever asks, what's his favorite verse? It, it, it may change. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's whatever we're studying is your favorite verse. But that, that first, uh, uh, 1 John 3, 2, that, but brethren, we don't know exactly what we're going to be. I pray for us a little bit. But when we see him, we'll be like him, okay? When we, when we see him, we'll be like him because we will know him. Um, and that's interesting, that, that presence being in his presence. Uh, I want to bring something to mind here, and, uh, um, and then we, we're going to continue. This is going to be our base text over the next, uh, I'm going to tell you where, we're going to, where the Lord's leading us uh, next week and a few weeks beyond. But the base text, we're going to stay right here around this. So we're not, we're not by far, we're not anywhere close to being done with, uh, with, with John 14, 6, Okay. But one thing that I thought of when I read this, no one comes to the Father except me. And I got to thinking about another verse that sounds really, really similar over in John 6, in John 6, 44. And I just wanted to just share your, share some thoughts for it. And when I wrote this down, I wrote down the protocol of the way. You know, there is the way and it's the only way. Well, how does that happen? And you remembered it when we looked in the studies of God's will, was a lot about God's will in John 6, Okay. It's the will of the Father we be saved, and he kind of uh, lays it out there, and, and he makes this statement, uh, Jesus does, in, in, uh, in John 6, 44, where he says that, 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 um, that no one can come to me, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. In other words, the Father knows who he's going to save, and he draws that person to his son, Jesus. Now, there's a, there is that responsibility of acceptance, but the Father will draw someone, uh, and I wrote down, remember what I said, the protocol, how does salvation work? How does a, how does one go from being uh, a baby or a child, uh, the age of, of, of accountability to the, to the age they are accountable, 
and, and they are able to understand. Remember that we've been, we had a great 11 o'clock sermon last week on, on you're responsible for what you know, um, about God. And, uh, and so we just see here where Jesus says that the father is the one that draws a soul to him. But then when you look at verse 14, six, Jesus says this, that no one comes to the father, but through me, but in John 44, 6, 44, no one comes to, to me except whom the father draws. And they sound like they're, well, who is it? Who, who, who is it? Is, is it, uh, is, is Father God drawing us, or is it, or is it Jesus? That's, and, and the answer is yes. <laughs> it's just like the question, is: was Jesus fully God or fully man? And you say, yes, he was both. Uh, and, and, we all, and we know because he's going to go on to say, I and the Father are one. How many times did he say that in his final words to disciples? We are one, and I came for him. So just to kind of share, I wrote down here, who... Uh, 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 who is coming to who <laughs> is the question. And it's just something that if you were, if, if someone were to bring this to you, maybe you might, you might know. Um, and we, just, we don't want to, it's not complicated, these things. Uh, uh, that Father God, we just said that, calls his chosen to his son. Then Jesus provides and secures access and documentation through his book. That's that Lamb's Book of Life we talked about, that your name is in it, how it works. And I just wrote this note down, and it's John. So why did Jesus say that no one comes to the Father but through me? Well, Jesus' Father, Father God, is in heaven. Remember the, the model prayer? Um, uh, uh, my, our Father who art in heaven. He says that. I mean, that's, that is, a, he's not asking about that. He's making a statement. Father God is in heaven. Father God is in the place of of. Of John 14, 2 and 3. I mean, he's there, okay? That's where, he, that's where he resides. We already said that, okay? So Jesus is saying that his Father is in heaven, all right? Then, you can, then, then we think of it this way. Well, if you want to see the Father and you want to be with him, basically, you've got to go to heaven. You've got to go to heaven to, to see him, to be with him. That's what he's saying here. No one comes to the Father. I don't ever want to say that we need. You can just take this word out, substitute it. That is that. That is not good. We don't never want to do that. Here's a thought, though. No one comes uh, to the presence of the Father in heaven but through me. In other words, you're not going to heaven by any other means but now, but through me. That's that's what he is telling us. The Father is there, and if you want to go there, then you where the Father is, which is in heaven. That that this is the way it works. The protocol of the way. This is how it works. Um, there's no other way, and it's final. It's said. It's done. And 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 uh, well, I'll share some things in just a minute. Now, I want to—I just want to visit one a little bit right here for a few minutes. The impact that that this "I am" had on on the, on the disciples. And again, I don't know why apostles has, has come to my mind this morning. I really hadn't thought anything about it all week. But when they began, when after they saw Jesus and and uh, and he ascended back, and they began to uh, fifty days after the resurrection, the Holy Spirit was sent Pentecost and. And, and the power of God busted wide open and the people, you know, it was just wonderful. I think the first three or four or five chapters of Acts are really amazing, uh, the study. And we, we did a study. I think we've already done two or three studies in the Acts since I have been been at Emmett Grove for now 12, 13 years. Uh, but but the power of God. But um, but how did this, the words of Jesus that I am the way, uh, and, and, how, and I love this. I, I have highlighted this all through my Bible. Uh, uh, and so I want to go just a minute over to Acts nine, and this is this is the uh, this is where Paul um, this is where Paul uh, was converted right here, uh, and and I want to read you it's it's, it's, it's Acts nine two. Remember we're just talking about and really about belonging to the way, uh, those that that accept Jesus that He is the way, and they say, Lord, we know You're the way. This is we're talking salvation here, folks. Uh, I know you're the only way, and, and I, you're my only hope, and so I, I'm trusting in you. And, uh, and, and, and then the phrase becomes here, as it turns out, uh, in the ninth chapter of Acts, uh, in verse 2. I want to just read the first verse to give context. Now Saul, just before he was converted, there again, he's, this, is his, this is the time that he was converted right here, by the way, in, in chapter 9. Still breathing threats and murder. Remember, he was the enemy against the disciples of the Lord, against these 11 that, that are in the meeting right now with Jesus or in the upper room, 
in, in this discourse, went to the high priest and he asked for letters from him, that is the high priest, to the synagogue at Damascus. That's where he was going. He was a, he was a bounty hunter then. He was going after Christians. So that if he found any in Damascus belonging to the way, belonging to the way, and you might note this in Acts 9 2, that in every reference, uh, six times actually, I think it's six times I found uh, in the gospel, uh, um, uh, not in the gospel, six times in the New Testament, that the way is, 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 is written uh, and it is capitalized. Remember, in this mid sentence, not the beginning of a sentence, which all sentences, by the way, the scriptures never had any sentences when they were first written. We just, for, for clarity and understanding, you have to have a, there are some verses, I don't know, but there's one Paul wrote that looks like, it, it looks like a, a run on sentence six times or eight times or eight, just goes on and on and on. I think it's in Ephesians. Uh, right there at the beginning, in Ephesians one, it just goes on and on and on and on, just comma, 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 it keeps on going. But anyway, we we uh, man put the punctuation to kind of break it up and be able to decipher and understand it. Uh, but the way is capitalized and uh, and it's mid sentence, and we've been looking at that whenever God talks about Himself, a He or His or whatever is capitalized. That means God, and this means God. This is this way is is, is really is the gospel is what it is. Um, and so he was going after those belonging to the way. I just, I, I just, I just remember when I came, when I, and I, I didn't really pick this up until I think until I came to Emmett Road. It's used as a title basically for those who believe belonging to the way. Saying this is where it came from. It came from Jesus when he said, "I am the way." Uh, I wrote down here, it's a description of Christianity, uh, of, 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 of the, a title of believers. If you belong to the way, uh, then you know Jesus Christ. Um, I want to go over to 22.4 after Paul was converted. And I just want to show you a few of these. Um, and it, like I say, I think about six times. But in 20, uh, 22 verse 4 is, a, is another. And, God, and Paul was given a testimony then. He, he had already uh, uh, caught fire for the Lord. And boy, he actually caught fire pretty quick. Actually began preaching almost immediately once he uh, uh, got his sight back and got strength. And he, he started proclaiming Jesus. But, uh, but he's right here and he's, he's, he's given defense here. And he's talking about himself. He's talking about what he was back in 9-2. He says this in 22-4 of Acts. He said, I persecuted this way, capitalized. Paul said, I used to do this. I used to, I used to persecute this way to the death, uh, probably speaking as far as we know of the death of Stephen. Remember, he was a young man then that held the coats while they stoned that, 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 uh, that holy man of God. Uh, binding and putting both men and women into prison. But I persecuted this way, he said. And it's that same way, capitalized. Um, it, it is Christianity that, that he uh, capitalized. Um, I'll go back to Acts 19 just a minute. Remember, this is we're glorifying God in the way. I mean, when he said this, it was just, uh, it is uh, it, the exclusivity of Jesus is, is being the only way to, uh, to the Father through heaven, certainly. But how this impacted and carried through. 19.9, Paul was at Ephesus. Um, and uh, uh, there was there were, there was a, there was a lot of pushback there uh, against the gospel, and you know Paul was was bold in the things that he uh, uh, endured in persecution, being beaten, and uh, I mean he, he he faced death many many times. But he said this in verse nine. Uh, uh, wrote, well, actually Luke wrote it, but uh, but when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way. They were against the gospel. They were speaking evil of the way before the people. Uh, and he goes, he said, he goes on that uh, that he withdrew from them and took away the disciples, reasoning daily from the from the school there at uh, at Tyrannius. Uh, but the way, there it is again. Uh, and he brings it up several times here. He brings up this way belonging to the way. Uh, and Luke used this word. Okay, Luke was was the one writing this. Uh, Paul spoke it though. Uh, also. Um, we find it again in Acts 19, 23, uh, that same speaking there. If you look right over there in 20, verse 23 of chapter 19 again, and then over in Acts 24, 14. I'm going to look at that one just a minute, and then we'll kind of put this to rest. But but just explaining to you again uh, uh, that the way was not just the way to Jesus. It, it, was a way to, it was a way of life, and it was identifying those that belonged to the way identified with Jesus. That's on earth, folks. I mean, that's... That's uh, the promise of heaven certainly is to come. But uh, Acts 24, um, uh, 14, Paul is speaking. He says, but I admit to you, remember he's a changed man here, 
that according to the way which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law uh, and that is, ri is written in the prophets. Prophets there. That now he admits, and it's interesting that the uh, that the non-believers and the pushbacks of the gospel and rejectors of Jesus called it a sect. That's exactly what we're going to look at next over the next couple of weeks. I'll, I will dwell on that just a little bit more. Uh, another way, uh, which does not exist. But now I, I belong to that way, uh, which others are, are saying. You know, everything's always. You know, that's what Satan does. He just takes whatever's true, perverts it to make it appear to be a lie. He's lying when he does that, and he's certainly making a lie, but he just takes whatever God has and perverts it. And so here, they're, they're, even they were looking at it and saying, even today, I think the Christians are now being called to evil people. Come on, folks. Um, uh, we, are, we are not evil people. Uh, uh, our, our Savior, certainly, uh, there was no one like him ever. They never, ever will walking on planet Earth. He, he was God. Uh, and so it's just interesting. Um, uh, I, I said that was the, the last way. Let's look at 22 right here on the same page. Uh, Paul was, was, was defending himself, defending Christ, actually, uh, in verse 22 before Felix. He was the, he was the governor there over uh, uh, Judea. Um, uh, and so, uh, but Felix having a more, this is in verse 22 of chapter 24 of Acts, but Felix having a more exact knowledge about the way, just that's the gospel. You know, it just means that he knew, his wife knew about it, uh, uh, and he knew, he, he really did. Um, and so uh, there again, there's that accountability. Oh my goodness, that, that what he knew. Uh, matter of fact, he got so scared there when he heard the truth and he knew it was the truth. In 25, Felix became frightened and said, go away uh, for the present. Uh, when I find time, I will summon you. He had to go, he really had to get away and think about this thing. I think God was really knocking on his door right here. That's Felix about the way, okay? The way, that's what this is all about this morning is the way. Now, Shortened. This might be a shortened up lesson, but I just want to share with you. Every now and again, actually becoming more and more. To be honest with you, uh, God gives me these these little. I, I don't know what they are. A little little. Really, it's parables. It's it's like a. I be you know. I'm thinking about God and I, in my work. I'm not around a lot of people. I don't work in a factory and I don't. I don't have a lot of distractions sometimes. Um, and and I when I'm surveying, I'm out in the woods and just just to, just been a wonderful wonderful career, but. Since I've been working by myself for these last couple of years, actually, with Jesus, he's always there, I get to think about things, stop and just ponder things. And as I get older, as I get a little wiser in the Word, I do that a lot. And God just gives me these little things that happen. I go, yeah, it's just spiritual. I mean, everything's like tied to, you know, the spiritual is way more real than the physical. But um, we have, uh, with our grandbaby, our first grandbaby being born up in Nashville, which is a horrendous drive to get up there. It's all day. and. I must admit, the first two or three times it seemed like going to Statesboro and back, you know, but but about the second or third or fourth time, you go, this is an excruciating drive. And we spend, uh, in, a, in, a, in a long weekend, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or whatever, we, we spend half of that driving. And so we found out, well, actually, God did this. He, an airlines that goes directly from Savannah, and I'm talking about flying, okay, that's where we're going. This is my parable about Jesus in the way. Um that uh, Southwest Airlines now, their hub is in Nashville. Go figure that one. And so, uh, you know, you, t you fly another airline, it's super expensive. It's like, man, they're, you know, we'll, we'll just drive. You know, we'll just drive and, and, and spend those two days or a good day and a half driving. But anyway, Southwest came up with these really, really reasonable flights. You get on an airplane in Savannah, and, a, and about an hour later, 50 minutes sometimes, a little over an hour, you're, you're, land, you're on the ground in Nashville, and we're like, this is wonderful, and, it, and the flights are very, very reasonable. So we have done a lot of flying lately, uh, and I probably flew 12 or 15 times, uh, mostly because of Cindy's family. I, I never had the means, in a sense, to fly, but, but anyway, we, when I married her, we, I flew a lot, and, uh, you know, and so but I, we've flown seven or eight times, uh, and, uh, and so I wrote down here, the parable of, of flying in Jesus. And I, and I just want to share this with, with you just a minute. Two main objectives when you fly. A lot of people don't fly because of these things. Two main objectives. That the plane takes off safely, okay? And the plane lands safely. Everything that happens in between, whether it's good or bad, as long as that plane gets off the ground and lands on the ground and everybody's fine, it's all good. That's, that's, that's all you could hope for, all you could... 
uh, uh, be blessed, you know, when you get on an airplane. And that, that weighs on people's minds. And, um, and we've talked about this before, or not we haven't, but you hear this phrase, and be careful with this one, that you've got your ticket to heaven. And we, that, that kind of can be degrades that. Uh, it's not cheap grace. It's not a cheap ticket that, that we have. And, you, and you're, G, we would never want to say Jesus is my ticket to heaven. That's just not right. But, but when you think about airplanes, you, to get on an airplane, a commercial, that you, you have to buy a ticket. And that's why I wanted to, to, to use that th this time. And remember, we're talking about the, the end result or the, the, the purpose of the parable is to explain that Jesus is that. So listen to this as, as God gave it to me. Um, that commercial flying, you're going somewhere. Now, uh, my brother uh, uh, Brent and his uh, son Colt have airplanes now, and uh, and I've randomly uh, over the last six or eight months been able to go fly with them, uh, and, and and it's just joy flying. You know, we're not really going anywhere. We're just going up and really just glory, just looking at God's glory the way I. But when you're flying commercial, you're doing what Jesus said. You you are going somewhere. Jesus said, "I am going somewhere." So when you get on a commercial airplane, you don't you don't spend five or six hundred dollars on a ticket. Southwest are not that high. I can promise you, we, or we'd be driving. But you're not just going to get on pay that kind of money to fly somewhere and fly back and say, yeah, I just flew. No, you're going somewhere, okay? And that and that's what Jesus is saying. There, there, there's a way. There's a place that I'm going that you want to be. Okay, listen. So, first of all, you make a choice to buy a ticket. You, you say, like Cindy and I, I just don't want to drive that, that distance and waste that time that I could be with my daughter and my grandbaby and my son-in-law. So you make a choice to buy a ticket, okay? And nobody forces you to buy a ticket to get on an airplane, but you make a choice to do that, okay? And in that, you're, you, you, you are reserved a seat um, on that airplane. I know sometimes that they overbook flights, never understood that. Why would they do that, oversell? But, but in generally speaking, when you buy the ticket and you pay for the ticket, you, you have a spot on the airplane, okay? And, and when you go to the airport, you have all faith that there's a place that you're going to sit on that airplane. Uh, and, and so, um, and you're going somewhere. And, and so your, your, your name is, uh, is, is, when you look, you might not even, you know this because you've seen this in movies and stuff. There's a manifest. There's a list. Now think about this manifest as being the last book of, of God. Uh, your name is on a list of people on that airplane, accountable. They, 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 they make sure you're on there when you give them your ticket. And when you get off, they're making sure that you're off the airplane. So they're trying to keep up with those that are on the airplane, okay? After that, listen to me, after that, the, the person that bought the ticket, that Cindy and I would buy these tickets to go fly to Nashville, I have no control over anything. Do you realize that when you're? I think you do. If you've ever flown, you get on there. I, I this is every this is out of my control. You know, uh, nothing that I do after I buy that ticket and walk on another plane with my seat and I sit down and I buckle in like they say. I have nothing. I have no control over anything. I don't. I, don't, I just think about these things. Think about the eternal is where we're going. Okay. Now, I am dependent for a safe takeoff and a safe landing on, and I'm probably gonna leave out half of this, uh, and our brother, uh, Travis Duncan, and now is, a, is, is training to be a pilot, and he's a, he's a co-pilot, and so I love talking to him. It's just so amazing how God's just put so many neat people in my life, and, and now we, 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 I'm trying to I'm trying to still talk about Jesus, but like when I talk to Travis, is I'm talking about airplanes, he loves them, and I do too, you know, I'm not a pilot, never did, I just love airplanes. So, now I'm dependent, I bought my ticket. I sat down, got no control over anything. Everybody, you know, like if you're if you're a fearful flyer, you're praying, right? And that's good too. But now I'm dependent on the ground crew. Things like making sure that plane's got enough fuel. Uh, they're doing their their little checkoffs and things that they do. I, I'm 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 dependent on on the mechanical dependability of the plane that they've the pilots before reported something on the plane that might not have been working right. I got no control over that. If I look out on the wing and I see something, I, I can't go call somebody, hey, man, you need to go check. You're sitting on that airplane, and, you know, you're at the mercy of, of all of these things that happen. You're at the mercy of the skill of the, the experience of the pilot supply. Obviously, you are. Um, and the air traffic controller is key. Um, and I've, I learned a lot about this from, this from the TV show Air Disasters. And I'll tell you, missing Jesus is a... Is a is a, quote an air disaster. It really is uh, missing him. 
So I'm dependent on these things and I've got no control over them. You, you kind of see where this is going. All I'm doing is I'm putting faith and trust. And, and I, when you get on a plane, you really are doing that. And, and you're trusting everything about the airplane, about those flying, about those controlling it, those that are getting it ready to go. And, and, and it's all in there. And, and, and there's nothing you can do but just have faith and trust that that plane's going to take off and fly and land safely. Uh, and I think you know where we're going with this. You're relying on those things. The way's the same way. And Jesus, what he's saying. And there's no difference. It really, this this little parable of flying in Jesus is, is, is right on. There's a destination. Well, everybody is going to end up somewhere. You might think some people that don't know the Bible and don't and don't know these things think that, that uh, and this could be like those that are really given to a reprobate mind that just, there's just, God's just, you know, he's closed the door. They have no idea. They just think they're going to live their life and die, and that's the end. There's, there's not going to be, but everybody's soul lives on. It does. It just it lives on in one of two places. Uh, and there's a destination. And so there's a departure. Uh, there's a takeoff. And, and then there's, a, there's, a, there's an arrival or a landing, just like in the, the airplane industry, the terminology. Uh, and believers that believe that Jesus is the way, uh, that he's the truth, <clears throat> and he's the truth, man, I'm telling you what. Uh, that 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 we could expand upon that almost forever, and, and this is that loaded I am, but I like it what he says up here when he talks about heaven. If it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, if there was not even a heaven, I'd I'm just truthful that we can believe Jesus. Okay, he's telling the truth. Okay, that's kind of what it, what it comes out to me, uh, the emphatic, and it's got, it's got many many teachings here about truth. Uh, his, the word is the truth, and and he speaks the truth. But he, he's always telling the word is true. He's always telling the truth. Remember what it says when he when he comes back on when, when, in the second coming uh, that he, that it says that that he's true and faithful, true and faithful. That that's him. That's Jesus. So he's telling the truth here, and certainly he, he's the way and he's the truth. Then then life eternal and life on earth. But we we do that. There's a destination. Um, Believers put their faith in the way uh, of Jesus and believe that. And from that point, we're just buckled in. You think about that. We're, we're buckled in under his security that that he has got us and taken care of us. Uh, John 10, 28 and 29, no one, you are eternally secure. Uh, and, and, and what we do, we put our faith that he says that I'm going there. I've, I've got a, I'm prepared a place. I've actually reserved a place for you. Uh, I've got life eternal to give, and I and I won't lose one. I never lost one. Do you see here? It's just like that plane ticket and, and flying. When you got Jesus, you, you're gonna your takeoff is gonna be. Uh, when we leave here, we talked about that. When we leave, God Jesus is gonna receive us. Everything is taken care of, and I tell you, it's just it's just so uh, that we buckle in with Jesus and believe that He's the way. He's gonna get us there. We're, it's, there are no doubts of any uh, of insecurity of, of how I'm going to get there and, and Lord I don't want to miss you on it and you know this key thing about being where Jesus is is so key uh, and living our life that way and, and he's going to take care of things on earth and in heaven okay um, and so he is the way and he is the truth and he is the life and no one comes to the Father no one comes into his abode no one comes into heaven apart from, from me and it's exclusive and it's one now uh, next week we're going to look at some some things we've already kind of given a hint to that. The deceptions sometimes that there's another way. Maybe we use a little bit of the gospel or a lot of the gospel, but we it's been bent in such a way or changed in such a way. And there 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 is a key verse that I want to read you. This is next week and the following weeks. So we're going to look at at, at, at uh, heresies uh, of 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 people's hope and and people preaching this. Uh, that there is another way. Remember the gate, the narrow and wide gate. That'll be used tremendously in, in John, uh, excuse me, Matthew 7. I think it's 13 and 14. But 2 Corinthians 11, 4. And I just want to kind of lead you and guide you next week as to where we're going. Uh, we're going we're gonna to use, a, a, a actually it's a book that the ladies used in Bible study. I have not even looked at it yet, but I have, I've have, I have, dipped my toe, dabbled a little bit into these false religions, but it's this little book right here that's, that says cults and counterfeit gospels. And so uh, these religions are close, very, very close, used part of the Bible, but but it is not the truth. 
uh, and not exclusively one way that Jesus says. We're just going to look at it to, to and compare it um, and, and pray that God would lead me in that and in, in reading that and finding scripture. So here's what Paul would write in 2 Corinthians 11, 4. I'm going to use this as a segue into next week and maybe the next few weeks of looking into some of these uh, false hopes. He said this. He's defending his apostleship. He's defending Christ. He says this. And there were a lot of, of, of folks that had added things to Jesus. I remember one time, Brother uh, um, Floyd uh, Waters was, was, was I, I'm trying to think of where it was at, Philippians maybe. Anything with, with anything that says Jesus plus something is wrong. It's, it's only Jesus. It's, only, it's just one way. You don't add anything to Jesus. You don't have to have Jesus and something else. And, and after that, that's, that's the counterfeit, and that's a cult. So Paul is defending that, and he says this, For if one comes and preaches another Jesus, listen to that, not the one in John 14, 6. I love this. Another Jesus whom we have not preached, in other words, you ain't not heard it from us, or you receive a different spirit, and believe me, there are. this is the reason why this book was written, the wrong spirit speaking. Which you have not received. That means you you didn't. This is not the spirit that Paul's talking about that, that that caused you to come to know God. The one that testifies about Jesus. This is the little s spirit, or a different gospel. All of these things. We got a different Jesus. We got a different spirit. We got a different gospel. Wrong. But he, he's he's telling us to beware of these things, which you have not accepted. You bear this beautifully. Don't accept those things. And don't, it is only the way and the truth. And it's only Jesus. And it's just him. Nothing added, nothing taken away. And we'll look at those things. Very good lesson. And I, I'll tell you, I could, we could just continue to teach on this. And we will. We're, we're really going to, the center point is going to be John 14, 6. And we're going to look at these things around. We're going to look at the wide gate. We're going to look at those that think that they're on the way to heaven. And, and, and how easy it is to live in that wide gate. Thinking they're going, their destination is going to be where the Father dwells in heaven. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at these things and see where the error of their doctrine is, okay? And, uh, and, and that the Lord would lead. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, giving thanks for the great I am, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you are, and uh, what you were about to be, to go through, and you knew it from eternity. You knew it before you created anything. You'd have to go to the cross. You knew we'd mess it up. It's all part of your plan. You knew it. It's something new to you. It was for the disciples, at this time, but but you knew that you had to go and and you had to give this truth to them and and praise God you did. Thank you, uh, thank you for these words and read that, that you spoke so plainly. And this is this verse is so plain, God. I, it's just to me, I just I get it, God. And I pray that others would too. And I pray you be glorified in this study. We think about these things, Lord, and and uh, Lord, if we don't, if we have a loved one, and Lord, I think about the Cindy's mom that. Lord, it uh, kind of on her deathbed, it looked like, in critical condition for a whole week. It's coming back around. You're giving her another chance. And, Lord, I pray that you might save her and speak to her and that she would know just the only way. She asked the question, God. Yeah, she asked it uh, when I was speaking to her and, and, and telling her about Jesus. That So you're telling me that the only way to heaven is through Jesus. And, uh, and she asked the right question. God, I pray that you would give her that answer uh, in her soul and save her. And, and anybody else that looks at this through time, God. And it, Lord, those of us that have our our destiny is there. We 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 know what our our seat has been reserved, our room, our apartment in heaven has been reserved in the Lamb's book. That we'd be more grateful of it, God, and be thankful and have a desire to tell others uh, not to miss this place. Do not miss this place. Remember, we remember what the what the rich man said in the in the, uh, in the in the true story of of the uh, Lazarus, the poor man, and the rich man. He. he he, he told Abraham to go tell his brothers not to come to this place. That place was hell, not to come there. But, to, but Lord, what he was saying was that he wanted to be where Lazarus was. He wanted to be in your presence where you are. Uh, there, there will be, and that, that, that hope of eternal life, is, we just thank you for that. And I pray you would speak to those saved and unsaved, God, that, uh, Lord, their destination might be, might be made, uh, God, and, and no one can change it. Lord, you're the only way. Thank you for the clarity of your word. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.